Here we have part of the graph of the function f. The value of the function at x, y is z. We want to see how f, or if you like, z changes if we change this point x, y. So if we pick a point in the x, y plane that's close to this point. Here is the point that we will look at. To get a z coordinate, we go up to the surface, or down if we have to. Well, in this picture, we're going up to the surface. And uh, we just read off the z coordinate to somewhere over here. How do we get a point that's close to x, y? Well, we can change the x value by a certain amount. We can call that amount delta x. It could be positive, it could be negative. And we can change the y value by a certain amount. It doesn't have to be the same amount. We can call that change delta y. Again, delta y can be any small positive or negative number. So if the change in x is delta x, then the x coordinate of this point will be x plus delta x. So we've just moved a distance delta x in the x direction. It happens to be positive here because this is the positive x-axis, but of course we could have moved the other way. We can change the y value by the amount delta y. So we can move a distance delta y in this direction. So the coordinates of a nearby point are given by x plus delta x comma y plus delta y. To get the z value of this point, we just evaluate the function at this point. Now we are going to be interested in the difference in the value of the function between the point x, y and the point x plus delta x comma y plus delta y. So z is just f of x comma y. The difference delta z is given by this expression here. Now sometimes you'll see the letter h for delta x and the letter k for delta y. Now we will be taking these limits. We will let delta x and delta y go to zero. In general, the blue region will not be a parallelogram. The surface will be curved. This blue region is just a piece of the surface defined by these four points. The four points are got by evaluating the function at the point x, y, at this point here, at this point here, which has coordinates x plus delta x comma y, and this point here. Well, it's going to look more like this actually, it's not very well drawn, but uh, we will have some um, rectangular region here in the xy plane. This side of a rectangle is delta y, this side is delta x. So once we have these four points, we can get our region, and by shrinking delta x and delta y to zero, the blue region becomes a parallelogram. Here is a close-up of the blue region after we have taken these limits. So we replace delta x with dx, delta y with dy, and delta z with dz. The blue region is now in the shape of a parallelogram. This point here corresponds to this point here. So in the limit, as delta x and delta y goes to zero, this point has coordinates x plus dx, comma, y plus dy. So to get the function at this point, we just need the z-coordinate of this point here. Well, the z-coordinate of this point here, we know, is the value of the function at x, comma, y. And it's this difference that we're interested in. Now this difference is called dz. We can also see it over here. Here's dz, the vertical difference between these two points. We will show that dz is given by this expression here. What we will do is get these two vectors that define the sides of the parallelogram. We will take the sum of the two vectors by the parallelogram law. The sum of them is a vector whose tail is here and whose head is up here. And by looking at the components of this resultant vector, we can get this difference dz. I'll show one side in brown and the other side in blue. Let's start with the brown vector. Now, from vectors we know that a unit vector in the direction of the positive x-axis is called i. This vector 
has a component in the x direction and a component in the z direction. It has no component in the y direction. How do we get the component in the x direction? Well, we just need the magnitude of this component, which is just the distance from here to here, which we know as dx. And we multiply dx by the unit vector i. How do we get the z component? Well, this goes back to the slope of the surface at this point, but the slope in the x direction only. So we're just interested in the tangent to the surface that's entirely in the x direction. So we're looking at the rate of change of the function with respect to x. So that's the partial derivative of f with respect to x. That'll give us the slope of this tangent. So this tangent line is entirely in a plane that's parallel to the xz axis. In the limit, as delta x and delta y goes to zero, then these two points are on that tangent line. So the slope of this tangent line is equal to the slope of this vector. So this vector is on the tangent line. That's only when we've taken limits. So the slope is partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point with coordinates x, y. But from this picture here, the vertical distance is can be got by measuring this distance and dividing it by the horizontal distance, which is dx. So this vertical distance must be must be given by this here, because if we divide this quantity by dx, we get the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So this partial derivative is evaluated at the point with coordinates x, y. So we just multiply the partial derivative by dx. That's only true in the limit. If we hadn't taken a limit, then this would be an approximation to this um, vertical distance. All right, so what is this vertical vector? Well, remember that a unit vector in the direction of the positive z-axis is called k. So it's a vector of length 1 pointing in the positive z direction, which we are assuming this is. So we multiply the magnitude, which is given by this. Um, well, this quantity could actually be negative. When I say magnitude, usually we mean a positive quantity. In this picture, it happens to be positive, as you can see, but it could be negative. But anyway, we multiply the difference between this value and this value, which could be positive or negative, by a unit vector k. So we can write our vector like this here. It's the sum of those two components by the triangle law. So this is the x component and the z component looks like this. And we put them together by the triangle law to get the, ones, the vector that defines one side of the parallelogram. Now, in a similar way, we can get the blue vector, which defines the other side of the parallelogram. As you can see, the blue vector has no x component. It has a y component which we can call the horizontal component, this component here. And it has a z component, which is pointing in the direction of the positive z-axis for this picture. The y component is actually pointing in the positive y-axis. I'll just try and draw it out here. So there's the vector, there's the y component, and the z component is this vector. So we add these two by the triangle law to get this side of the parallelogram. So let's look at these two components. Well. This vector here is dy times a unit vector in the direction of the y-axis. And from vectors we know that a unit vector in the direction of the positive y-axis is called j. So we just multiply dy by j. dy happens to be positive in this picture. Now what about the z component? Well, in a similar way to what we did before, we consider the rate of change of the function in the y direction. So I'll try and show that tangent to the surface at this point, but in the y direction. So this line is entirely in a plane parallel to the zy axis. The slope of this line 
is the partial derivative of the function with respect to y now and it's evaluated at this point here point of coordinates x y but in the limit the slope of this tangent line is just the slope of this side of the parallelogram so we just consider rise over run to get the slope so the rise has to be partial derivative of f with respect to y times dy because when we divide this quantity by dy the dy's cancel and we get what we want uh, partial derivative of f with respect to y so now we just add these two components to get our vector so I'll write that out so it's dy times a unit vector in the y direction which is j plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times um, dy and we have a unit uh, we have a vector in the direction of the z-axis so we just add these two components together by the triangle law to get this vector here so this component well after we've multiplied by unit vector k just add these two components now at last we can get this black vector here which will enable us to get dz so how do we get it well we just add the two vectors that define the sides of the parallelogram so we get dxi plus dyj and now we have two k vectors so we combine them together these partial derivatives of course are evaluated at the point x y so we found the k component of this black vector we call that k component dz or if we like we could call it df because we're dealing with a function of just two variables here now the other component of the vector is not so important it's this component here that's the component that's in the xy plane well we can see it's given by this here dxi plus dyj so here it is its tail is at the point with coordinates xy its head is at the point with coordinates x plus dx comma y plus dy so we found the difference between this point and this point in the z direction that's our dz that's after we've taken limits